Welcome to today's Career Speaker Series. My name is Alejandra Sacio. I work with the Fulfillment Fund. I'm the director of comms here. Um, we're so excited to have you guys all here uh, to hear a little bit about Araceli's uh, road to success. Um, so let me introduce our speaker today. It's Araceli Naranjo. She was born and raised in El Sereno here in Northeast Los Angeles, the daughter of a single mom um, who lived in a household where education was always a priority and the definite road to success. Um, and her mother immigrated in her 20s, so very young, but really pushed her kids to, to get that education and go after that degree. She attended Occidental College with aspirations of attending veterinary school. Um, and then ended up getting a bachelor's degree in biology. Um, and uh, her path took a turn for the best uh, when she began doing cancer research at City of Hope. Um, so very excited to hear about that. That's when she fell in love with the field. So without further ado, I'll turn it over to Araceli. Yes, thank you so much. Uh, I appreciate the introduction. Um, yeah, I'm excited to be here, talk a little bit about what I, uh, the work that I do, the team that I work with, uh, working at City of Hope, uh, like Alejandra mentioned, uh, it's a cancer hospital. Um, and so we do research as well as treat patients. So I have a slide deck that I'd like to share with you guys. Uh, bear with you. Actually, yeah. one thing we both forgot to mention, basically me, is your title, a Associated Director of GMP Manufacturing. Um, maybe we can kind of just start there of, of, I don't know if you have it on one of your slides, but um, how that kind of comes into City of Hope. Yeah, actually I do. That is a slide that I have. And so again, thanks again for having me. Please stop me and ask questions. Just like Alejandra mentioned, I went to Woodrow Wilson High School in El Sereno, then went to Occidental College for my bachelor's in biology. At that point, I was dead set on going to veterinary medicine. Um, but yeah, I took a turn, uh, still in the sciences. So uh, shortly after graduation, I ended up going to City of Hope to join as a research associate one. Research associate one meaning like apprentice, still really learning the processes. I was good with my hands. I knew the science work, do the biology. However, being there, they introduced me more to all the work that um, we were doing there and specifically what was that project that we were targeting. Then I moved up to Research Associate 2 pretty shortly thereafter just because my technical work was pretty good and I was understanding the project. So my group was really good about promoting me. After, shortly after that, I became a senior research associate. So it's just like, you know, the different steps that you, you get at it being in a research level um, in these types of organizations. City of Hope is a nonprofit organization. And so they kind of have their own naming. As you guys, you know, start looking into the sciences, you might end up having um, a different type of a name, a different type of a scale. But, you know, you're basically at your entry level and then more senior. Once I got my hands wet in that, I became a staff scientist. And so really more um, looking over um, people, starting to manage a little bit, really starting to establish more of the protocols um, with the rest of the group. And then as our group really defined ourselves into we're doing what's called GMP, which is good manufacturing practice, um, basically making of T cells. I know manufacturing sounds like a like a company like where you're making things, right? Well, we're making T cells for, for cancer patients. Um, but really what that entails is me overseeing now a team of 17, um, doing day-to-day -day things, making sure that they're doing the work that they should be doing, answering any questions. Um, but still, because I know the background on what needs to be done, then I would it will be able to facilitate between the research side, who we still deal with, which is what I started doing at first, to now actually making these products for patients for the clinic. So I'll talk a little bit about what is cancer. I know that a lot of people have heard it, and I'll just kind of start there to kind of give you guys an idea of what we do. So cancer, in a sense, it's these cells, right? We all have our cells. They start multiplying and dividing. However, sometimes you get this rogue cell that just is odd. Well, what your body does is it kills that cell off so that it doesn't continue to divide, right? So what ends up happening, if you look here, this is what a normal cell looks like. This is some staining that we do in the lab, and this is what a cancer cell looks like. Right off the bat, you can see the different morphologies. They're shaped differently. They divide differently. They're in different sizes. They just don't look the same, right? So in this case here, as you guys see your cells divide, if we cannot repair the cell, usually it just dies off 
and it's done. With cancers, it's not like that. They continue to expand, expand, and they expand at faster rates, and they seem to overtake parts of the body. So one type of cancer treatment that we that you know we want to deal with is just care. As much as you uh, don't realize, just caring for somebody is part of treatment. Chemotherapy. This is where we and you guys have probably heard this. We give chemicals. Chemicals go into the patient's bloodstream, and it really tries to kill all those cells that are dividing. Unfortunately, with chemotherapy, it does not just kill the cancer cells, it kills the healthy cells. So a lot of times people with um, cancer, they get a uh, low immunity, they get really impacted by this, and it's really, really hard on their bodies. Radiotherapy. This one's may not be as common, but it's actually radiation that they're using to try to damage the cells in a certain area. Immunotherapy, that's where we come in. So this is actually using the patient's own immune system to try to fight these cancers. So whereas chemotherapy really attacks the whole body, it really damages, radiation is very damaging. This is actually a little bit different where we're actually making cells to stimulate the immune system. So right now, genetically modify cytotoxic T cells with receptors to specifically recognize a tumor target. Okay, what does that mean? So a patient comes in, they give us their blood. We take that blood and then we isolate the T cells that we want. As you guys might be learning your biology, there's different type of T cells. We want these very specific, very special T cells. Why? Because we've learned that they can be very, very potent when we put them back in the patient. We then do what's genetically modified. What does that mean? That means in the lab, we've made a DNA that really hones in on the different tumors that we're after. So what our engineers do is they actually figure out that DNA sequence. They make it, they give it back to us. And then when we isolate the cells, we put them into the cells. We then expand those cells outside of the body. And then eventually we freeze the cells. We test the cells to make sure they are what we want them to be. And then we give them back to the patients. There's two ways to give them back. We either give them back intracranially, meaning into the brain when they have brain tumors, or intravenously, an IV, just like you guys have seen an IV before. Those are for, meant for more um, uh, of the ones that have the tumor in, the, um, in their blood, like leukemia, lymphoma. Now we talked about the research side. So the research side, we have flask, we had to try all this out. We have to do that before we go into humans. This is actually one of our mouse experiment rooms. This is a room where we take our mice because again, we have to try to simulate this in a living body before we can go into an actual human body. In this case, what we've done is we've actually used mice. So there's specialized mice that we have, or that are engineered to be able to do these kinds of experiments. This is a coworker of mine. He's actually injecting um, some T cells into the side of this mouse. Um, and this mouse already has a brain tumor and we'll show you guys some data. So in this data, what you see here, is week, uh, day one, day four. Why is this looking like this? This is called fluorescence. So what we did is we actually put a, a brain tumor T cell, I'm sorry, a brain tumor cell into each of these mice. So you see it spark up because we actually put, we engineered these to have this thing called firefly luciferase um, onto it. Just like a firefly, it brightens up. So there's an enzyme that we put into these mice every time. We then take a picture with the specialized um, device. And as you can see here, all of these guys at day one and the day four, you see how red it is? That just means there's a lot more of those cells. What we do here is in each of these incubators, there's one patient, the patient cells. And throughout the time, and I'll show you these, these are devices. As we go through, not only do I work with my hands, but I work with all of these machines, right? So this machine helps us separate out the cells from the patient initially. We then get these cells, and this is our first step of isolation, isolating the cells that we want. This is the second step of isolating those very, very special cells. These are the incubators where we grow the cells. This is a very, very strong magnet. There are these beads that we use to help these cells want to live, survive, and proliferate. And we have to remove them before they go into the patient. So that's what this device is. And at the end, you see this little liquid here. We have to remove them from that liquid and put them into something that is going to allow us to infuse into the patient. So this is a cell washer. 
at the end it goes into a liquid nitrogen you guys have probably seen this like in the movies right like where all the stuff like boils over like in jurassic park that's where our cells are actually frozen down in the sciences what's really important is publications why is it important because what i learned today i want to make sure that you know about it so that you can then elevate your um your work so personal um experience for students looking to pursue biomedical so for me i was always you know in love with the sciences this is why i i majored in biology um one thing i would say is that the sciences they're not easy um we have like the earliest classes you have labs during college um but you know, I would suggest that you just stick with it and then also find help, whether it's from your professor or a tutor or anything like that. Um, and then also, too, what I would say is that don't get so frustrated at the fact that you might not know every single piece of information that has to do with biology and chemistry. In college, you're really looking at the broad view of it. A lot of the stuff that I learned, yes, it does apply to what I do today, but a lot of the stuff doesn't. And so what I actually learned, I learned on the job. So don't be discouraged because maybe you get a C in chemistry or biochemistry or biology, anatomy. Don't give up. I think that as you work your way through the sciences, you'll see that there's some things that um, you can't learn from reading a book and they're actually learned on the job. Any any other career advice? Um, for myself, I think um, be open to experiences, be open to opportunities. Um, I am that kind of person that never says no. Um, and also ask questions as a student, as whether you're high school, college, or new to the job, don't be afraid to ask questions because I won't like, I won't know what you don't know, right? If you ask me a question, then I can guide you. Um, I've been training people for over 20 years. And for me, I feel like if you don't have a question, you probably mm -hmm. don't know what's going on. And then I don't know how to ask right? I don't know how to how yeah. to ask you how to guide you. So the more questions you ask, I can see kind of where your thought process is, and I can guide you a little bit better. So don't be afraid to ask questions. Don't be afraid of opportunities. Um, I know a lot of times we're like, oh, well, that's not attainable, or oh, no, but that that's not me. Um, I'm here 20 years, you know, into this field, I didn't think I, I would be where I am. Um, and it, you know, it does take a lot of people. I've had a lot of support along the way, um, whether it's professors, my coworkers, friends and family, you know, everybody's just been uh, there. And then also, yeah, just don't be afraid of opportunities. I think that's yeah. a, a huge one. And it shows interesting curiosity, which I think is probably um, very important in your field. Yes. Uh, the other thing I wanted to add, and I'm sorry if you don't mind me uh, dropping it in, and is also a fulfillment fund student. So she was once just like all of you. Um, and, you know, how, how inspiring that you have this really incredibly interesting and fulfilling career. How did you, uh, how did you land on it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's it's a crazy experience. But yes, I mean, the fulfillment fund has literally been in my life forever. Um, I joined in in middle school, I think I was either an eighth or a ninth grader. Um, and, and they have provided so many or you guys have provided so many opportunities. And I think I just always had that don't say no. So you know, all these activities that you had, if I didn't have a ride, okay, maybe I didn't go. Um, but otherwise, you know, I just wanted to learn more and, and, and be open to that. Um, how did I land this? It was actually kind of crazy because after college, like I said, I was on track for veterinary medicine. I had my mindset. I had already gone and done my, a few years of um, working at, as a vet tech. Um, actually, uh, somebody that was close to the fulfillment fund um, recommended me to a veterinarian who was down the street from Oxy. And I would go volunteer there and I volunteered there for about a year. And then I had a, a friend there, he goes, why are you not working here? Why are they not paying you? I'm like, I don't care about getting paid. I just wanna like work here. Um, eventually they started paying me. So that was actually kind of nice, right? Um, and I guess another tidbit of information, I tell my, my 16 year old daughter this all the time, don't be afraid to ask a question because the worst thing they can say is no, right? 
just ask. Um, and so I asked and then they started paying me. And so now it was like twice as fulfilling for me because I was doing what I loved and getting a little bit of money for college and my books and everything. So when I graduated, I started looking for something different. I said, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to pause on the sciences because it's, it does take a lot of, you know, um, a lot out of you. It really does. Um, but again, stick with it. And then I applied everywhere that I could. They had a job fair and I literally gave my resume to every single table. I literally interviewed for everybody. And City of Hope was my only science related um, job opportunity. I went there on a Thursday. They asked me to come back on a Friday. They're like, great, you got, to, you got the job. Would you like to start? When would you like to start? And I said, okay, but I can only guarantee you two years. They said, yeah, no problem. And I just fell in love. So. It was kind of crazy that it was like my only position, like my only interview in the sciences. And it's been a, it's been the best thing that's ever like that's ever happened to me. <laughs> well, and it's kind of great because you sort of still get to, you know, play with little animals from time to time. <laughs> <laughs> I don't um, do that anymore. <laughs> that was tough. That was tough. Oh, OK. <laughs> but I do. But I do get to do these kinds of things. Not only do yeah. I like like training my staff, but this is I, I've done. um career days uh, from a few years now. I have a lot of friends that are teachers. So I've gone to elementary schools, um, middle schools, high schools, and I've actually gone back to Occidental College to talk about what I've done. And I really enjoy it, especially um, when I speak with groups that, you know, can relate to me, right? Mm -hmm. Being from East LA, uh, maybe first generation. Um, and, and like I tell my daughter, like, you know, just keep pushing and, and something good will come of it. So don't give up. Awesome. This is really exciting. I hope some of you guys take her up on this offer because back in the day, internships were unpaid. Hey, yes. What do you know? Yeah. Thank you so much, Araceli, for, for joining us today. This was incredibly inspiring. Mm -hmm.